Okay, um, welcome back. I'm going to look at the Pixel 2 a little bit closer on the setup of the flight controller itself. So, looking at the, the, the flight controller itself is, the Cube is the Pixel 2 flight controller itself. That's the Cube. That is screwed securely with four screws to the carrier board at the bottom. Now, there are a few terms that are bounded about, which is the IMU, the FMU, the power and IO. Basically, it consists of four boards. So within the cube is the IMU, the isolated and heated IMU board, and the FMU board, which is the main um, flight control, IO, um, and the main brains of it, okay? Then within the carrier board is all the IO connections, and some power, not everything, but I believe there's some power in the bottom as well. So it consists of four boards, basically. Um, the big changes over Pixhawk 1, that's the real things to talk about here. So um, I've got my phone here for this one because I can't remember all of this off the top of my head. So it has three IMUs, which consist of two on the IMU board. So that's two integral measuring units, which are vibration isolated on the separate board and then there is a third IMU that is fixed to the flight controller board which is not isolated inside the cube. Again the main IMUs are heated. Two onboard compasses so again there is a onboard compass on the IMU isolated board and then there is an onboard compass on the flight control board inside as well. That is the same with the barometers. There's two barrow sensors, one on the IMU, one on the um, main flight control board. Then you've got the dual power input, um, the external I2C, GPS uh, puck with safety. Uh, really, the Pixel 2 compared to the Pixel 1 is not necessarily a massive upgrade in hardware. So the hardware itself is not necessarily a massive step forward. What it is though is a an improvement in having isolated isolated and heated IMU for starters. So they're on board with with that as most other of the bigger flight controllers are now. Um, and it's a repackage, so you've got the new connections, um, more I.O., so more up-to-date I.O., you've got CAN, um, you've got um, the new GPS and a couple of other things. So, really, what they've done with the Pixhawk 2 over the Pixhawk 1 is they've not rewritten the book. What they've done is gone through it and tidied it up, really, is the best way to put it. That's how I would put it. I did have a Pixel 1 before, which I had for about a year. I had no end of problems with it. Um, I just didn't get on with that particular unit. Part of that for me was having no internal isolation, so it limited me in what I could do with it, and I did find the wiring connections cumbersome. From what I can see of this out the box, and I haven't even fired this up yet, I am a lot happier already, if I am completely honest. I like the new connections, they're good. I like the, the, the lots of IO, the new power setup. There are changes around the way the dual power works now, which I'm not gonna get into. I would strongly suggest going in on the Pilot website and uh, having a read of that. There's a huge amount of information on there for folks. What I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be building this into a pretty big quad, actually. I, I've got a frame I'm building up. It's a bit of a Franken quad is the easiest way to put it. But we're going to be running a DJI um, E800 propulsion on it. And we're going to have a couple of 6S packs. So I'm, I'm going to do this. And, and what I'm looking forward to doing is getting an Edison in the bottom. And I want to get all of that up and running. The companion computer. I've had a look into it and it's not clear to me at the moment exactly how easy it is. It seems still in its early stages. That's my opinion just as a complete outsider. I'm a novice with this. I'll hold my hands up to that. I'm certainly no expert in any shape or form. So the companion computer side of it certainly looks quite complicated. But what I'm hoping to do is do some videos to try and put that together in such a way that it might help some folks or, or might allow some people to be able to um, 
maybe set one up themselves. Really, I'm hoping to get a script running on it that basically allows it to go and do something, go and do its own thing, um, get up, go off and do it and come back. Whilst you can do that with a mission planner, I'd like to be able to have it so, you know, if it powers up, it goes and does its thing and it comes back and lands. Um, and that's the plan. You know, no input from mission planner. Obviously, if you're ever flying an RC craft, you should always have an RC connected. But for me, what I want to do is, is demonstrate that I can have a completely autonomous vehicle, basically, while having the ability to um, get communication back and forth with it through things like Mission Planner, but having the the base programming pre-scripted to just run. That's it for this video. This, I think, is part three of, of this video. So I may have got a couple of things a little bit wrong. I apologize to the guys at Hex and uh, Profi CNC if I have. Um, overall, out the box, my first impressions are, are very good. You know, I'm quite happy with it. I, I'm happier than I was with the Pixel Quan. Thank you very much for watching. I'll do another video again soon.